Hey everybody, welcome back. This is a, a little bit more on tuples. I'm not gonna go too into detail on tuples because to be honest, most of the things that they can do are similar to list and you've already gone over list extensively. Uh, so this is gonna be just a, a short video that's gonna show you a few things that you might need when you're accessing tuples. So let's go ahead and make some tuples. I'm gonna make some points and these are just going to be coordinates. So we'll just say a coordinate here and point three is maybe, I don't know, 10 and negative four. Okay. So we have uh, three points. And what we can do is if I want to know, let's say for whatever reason, I don't know how long a certain tuple that I received is. Maybe it's in a function or something that I'm making and I get a tuple and I don't know how long it is or I want to loop over it. I can check how long the tuple is just by using length. And length is a function that works also with lists. So if you're using list or tuples, you can still use length, it's exactly the same. Okay. Another thing that is uh, similar is the in uh, operator. And so in will let us know if something is inside a tuple or not. So if I do this, I'm gonna get a true and false value. So I run this, and this is obviously false because five is not in point one. But if I change this, I get true if I change it to point two, because five is in point two. Okay, so those are just two things, the length and the in, uh, length function and the in operator. Those are really useful when you're using tuples, especially if you're going through a whole bunch of data. So tuples, when you make a whole bunch of tuples, usually you put them in a list or do something with them because you're collecting data or oftentimes you do that you're collecting information so for example in this case i'm collecting points and i might have a thousand points that i want to plot on a screen i want to do make an image out of points or something like that uh, and using tuples i can group them together and then I can store them all in a list. So if I want, for example, to make a set of points, I can do that just by PT1, PT, uh, PT2, ah, PT3. And if I print this out, set of points, I now have a list of points. And this is actually really, really common. And the reason is, is because when you make a list, you usually want that list to be the same type. So everything in here is a tuple, and its type is tuple, but it's all a, the same tuple, meaning the tuple looks exactly the same. So if I pull something out of the tuple, for, for example, or I pull something out of the list, I could also do this. I could say I want the zero element in the list, and of that element, well, let's do that first. Let's just pull this out. Zero element of the list will give me my first point. But if I want the second element of the first element of my list, I'm gonna get four. Okay, so this is, so to follow what's going on here, this says, go ahead and go to the zero element of my list. And then the second set of brackets says, I'm assuming that whatever point one is, whatever the first element in your list is, I'm assuming it's either gonna be another list or it's a tuple. And if it's either of those things, it's going to get you the second element or the item at index one from that list. So if I change this to two, this should print out the one, two, zero, one, two. So it's gonna access this tuple and it's gonna get the first index, which is zero, one. So it should be a negative four that it's gonna print out. Okay. so. That works pretty well. All right, uh, so that's accessing elements of a tuple that are inside of a list, which is quite common to actually do. All right, uh, another thing that's pretty common is actually pulling the items out of a tuple. So a way you can do that is the following. X, Y, okay, is equal to P, T1. Now this looks pretty weird, right? I've got two variables over here separated by a comma. Well, if I now print these out, x, print y, it's actually pulled out both of the elements 
from this tuple. So it pulled out, it's assuming that this PT1 has two variables in it. Now, if for whatever reason, maybe I make a 3D point and I try to do this like this, it's not gonna take three and four and ignore 10. What happens is it says too many values to unpack. And that's what I said earlier, we're gonna learn to unpack things. And unpacking means you're unpacking all the values outside of, uh, taking them all out of the tuple. So if you pack in variables in a tuple, it's like packing a suitcase. Imagine your tuple is your suitcase. You pack everything in, and then you take those values back out, you unpack them. All right, so in this, uh, this case here, we can unpack values, but you have to have the same number of values over here as you do in the tuple. So let's go back, put that 10 there. And if it's a 3D coordinate, I would now be able to unpack all of them. So if I print it out Z this time, you'll see that it is 10, okay? So that's pretty cool. It's an easy way to take values out. Now, I'm gonna go back to my set of points here. Probably shouldn't have deleted that anyways. PT1, PT2, PT3. And let me show you the last thing I'm gonna, I'm gonna do in this video here, is if I wanted to, and I'm gonna need to get rid of this 10, if I wanted to, I could say 4xy in set of points, print x plus y. Okay, so what this does is it's unpacking them in the for loop. So if you, oops, if you run this, which means I'm gonna need to convert these to, to strings, gave me that error down there, forgot to put that in, okay. If I run these, it'll unpack them in my for loop for me. So it works just like what I just showed you, but I'm actually unpacking it as I loop through it. So if you wanna loop through all of the coordinates in a list, so maybe I make a thousand of these and you wanna loop through them all and do some calculation or determine this one's in quadrant one, this one's in quadrant two or anything like that, you can very easily do that by unpacking the variables actually in a loop. And if this was a little different here, you could do the same exact thing and put a Z here and run it and you're gonna get three things unpacking. Okay, so I think that's pretty cool the way you can unpack things uh, from a tuple quite easily. All right, so these are just uh, some of the things you can do with tuples and just keep in mind if you are making a whole bunch of some item, and it could be like a name, age, and weight like we did previously, or name, age, and height, or it could be a coordinate on the screen, you wanna pack it inside of a tuple. And you wanna pack it there because once you've made those things, they're usually permanent. Uh, you can also put them in a list to put them all in one variable, and you could delete or remove those points as need be, okay? so. That's really about it for tuples. Uh, do some of the practice with, with them and uh, I will catch you in the next video when we start talking about something brand new. Okay, uh, it has, as always, if you need any help, if you have questions, leave them in the YouTube comments or on my site. Okay, thanks for watching.